We've got breaking news today. Vince McMahon's legal team filed a motion in the District Court of Connecticut on Tuesday to compel arbitration in the matter of Janelle Grant's lawsuit uh, against him that was filed in January. And so basically what McMahon's team is doing is that they are requesting the court transfer this matter to a private arbitration hearing. So perhaps you know a little bit about arbitration from sports. You have a third party that is going to uh, give a binding ruling on a dispute and how this is different from litigation. Litigation is public. So the public, the media would have access to what takes place in those hearings, whereas in a private arbitration setting, that would not be the case. And so I have a statement here that is on the website for Trellis Law. That's a law firm, and they have a little description up on their website about what uh, filing a motion to compel arbitration really is. And on that page, they state, typically a party makes this motion when it believes that mere mention of the evidence during trial would be highly prejudicial and could not be remedied by an instruction to disregard. So basically what McMahon's team is saying is that Janelle Grant, when she signed the NDA in 2022, that NDA had a clause in it that stated any disputes would be taken up in arbitration rather than uh, legal disputes, litigation, et cetera. Also in today's filing, McMahon's team refuted several of Grant's claims in her lawsuit, and we've got a few snippets of today's filing to show you here. So, so up on your screen now, just a few snippets that are in this filing that McMahon's team filed on Tuesday. They write, by publicly filing her salacious, false, and defam defamatory complaint, plaintiff has brazenly and intentionally violated a binding contract to arbitrate. Then later in today's filing, it explains a little bit more about the NDA and this arbitration clause that existed in it. So it writes, in fact, because the parties wish to preserve the confidential and private nature of any disputes under the agreement, they specifically provided in the agreement that disputes will be resolved through arbitration. Plaintiff was represented by a lawyer who neg negotiated the agreement for her before she executed it. When defendant learned that plaintiff, despite her promises, had violated the agreement by wrongfully disclosing both the existence of the agreement and their relationship, he exercised his contractual right to withhold payment otherwise owed under the agreement. So this part is a little controversial because where McMahon is saying that she violated the NDA actually comes before she filed the suit against him. So they are arguing that the Wall Street Journal article that came out and led to his uh, initial retiring from WWE, that Grant was a source for that article, and thus she violated the NDA that she signed. So McMahon is saying that he stopped payment once that happened. And, that, and now what he's saying is after he stopped payment, she filed the lawsuit, which was again in violation of the arbitration clause in the NDA that they signed. However, her side will probably just say, yeah, but that NDA became void when McMahon stopped paying. But anyway, the filing continues. In response, plaintiffs sought to harm him. She intentionally violated the enforceable contract with her salacious false and, uh, false and defamatory public filing. However, the FAA and binding United States Supreme Court precedent and plaintiff's own agreement require that if plaintiff wishes to proceed with her fictitious claims, she must do so in arbitration, not in this court, and that this action be stayed pending arbitration. All right, so elsewhere in this filing, McMahon refutes uh, several items that were in Grant's initial lawsuit, one of those being that she was a caregiver to her elderly parents and in financial difficulty before entering into the relationship with McMahon. So it reads here, contrary to plaintiff's false allegations, plaintiff and defendant, defendant, collectively the parties, engaged in a consensual relationship during which defendant never coerced plaintiff into doing anything and never mistreated her in any way. In fact, a lot, oh, ridiculous. So you might remember from a few videos ago, a love letter that Grant had written to McMahon uh, was published in the media. McMahon's team contends that it's proof that they were engaged in a consensual relationship. However, uh, Grant's lawyers uh, contend that she was coerced 
into writing the the letter by McMahon and actually states that uh, much of the letter was plagiarized from movies and other interviews that she had read. So it says here, in fact, a love letter plaintiff wrote to defendant shortly before the parties ended their relationship. Plaintiff described defendant as my best friend, my love and my everything, praising him for being the wonderful, tender, vulnerable, heart on your sleeve soul you really are. It is incredulous that plaintiff, a then 42-year-old woman who claims on her resume to have a law degree from Pace University, would have written these words to defendant months after all these events in the complaint of alleged abuse, coercions, and sex trafficking took place. But as I mentioned, uh, regarding this letter from 2021, Janelle Grant's team contend that Vince McMahon forced her to write it. Also, in today's filing, McMahon's team refutes Grant's claim in her lawsuit that she was caring for her elderly parents leading up to her relationship with McMahon and experiencing financial difficulty. The, today's filing reads, at the time the parties met in 2019, plaintiff was not dealing with profound grief from her parents' deaths and struggling financially as described in her complaint, and she had not been devoting years to around-the-clock caregiving of her parents. Those statements are complete falsehoods based on a foreclosure action against plaintiff and her parents. Plaintiff's father passed away on April 18th, 2017, two years before plaintiff met defendant and his marital status was recorded as widowed confirming plaintiff's mother had passed earlier so he's basically saying that both of her parents had passed two years before they entered the relationship however and callis the lawyer representing grant she responded to russell nomics regarding this story and she said vince mcmahon has never known a storyline that he doesn't twist to fit his own shameful narrative her father was in in-home hospice during his final days where janelle continued to care for him around the clock Prior to his death, she had been caring for her blind, wheelchair-bound mother. Using the grief of someone else, of someone who lost both of her parents is an all-new level of disgusting. McMahon's filing also states that McMahon and Grant were both aware that the other was engaged in other romantic relationships, and it contends that Grant was living with her fiancé at the time of her relationship with McMahon. So the filing today reads, During the party's consensual relationship, plaintiff and defendant knew that the other was also involved in other romantic relationships. Plaintiff was living in a park tower, a luxury multi-million dollar building in Stanford, Connecticut with her longtime fiance, attorney Brian Goncalves. Plaintiff and Goncalves lived in the same luxury building as defendant just four floors below when the parties began their affair in 2019. Plaintiff would often visit defendant at his condominium at all hours, including at 2.30 a.m. to pursue their affair and then return back to her condominium with Goncalves the same night. So Ann Callis, however, refutes that they were engaged. She said that uh, Grant's ex-boyfriend allowed her to stay in the apartment as she rebuilt her life and resume post taking care of her parents. She had no job and no other financial support to lean back on. Okay, so to just sum this all up, uh, McMahon's team is requesting that this matter be transferred out of the court and into a private arbitration hearing. That would mean everything would happen behind closed doors. And they are saying that Grant's NDA, even though McMahon had begun to withhold payment on the NDA, they are saying that disputes regarding the NDA were still binding and that the arbitration clause that exists in the contract is still binding as well. Therefore, the matter needs to go to arbitration. And of course, he also refuted a lot of things that were in Grant's lawsuit. So we will keep you up to date with everything that's going on. We will have a news rundown video up probably tomorrow as well with more news. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, that you've clicked the notifications bell, and I'll see you again next video.